Okay, welcome. This is my vlog, uh, surviving, surviving a relationship with somebody who had full-blown borderline personality disorder. And this is for people, non-borderlines, who have been or are in a relationship with a borderline and uh, to help you see that, you know, it's not your fault. It's a very toxic dynamic. I'm also not attacking borderlines. I have no ill will or judgment against them. Um, everybody's got something and this happens to be what they have and the great news is if you have borderline just go get help. Just go get targeted help. You can recover. And uh, not only will you be happy, which is the most important thing, you will be happy, but everybody else around you will be happy and you won't be causing so much damage. If you want to know what it's like to be on the other end and why you need to get help, I can guarantee you that I speak for a lot of people who have gone through it. Um, being with a borderline is very, very uh, traumatic, and that's because you have suffered tremendous trauma. It's amazing that you're even alive. You know, what you've accomplished just by being alive is, you know, I, if I had a hat, I'd take it off. I don't know that I could survive what you've been through. So it's not that you're this horrible person. You've been through uh, hell, and you're doing everything you can to survive. Unfortunately, without treatment, it's, um, it's extremely damaging to others as well as to yourself. All right, so here's the real reason why borderlines get triggered. They're going to tell you, it's because of something you did or didn't do or something you said or something you thought or something you felt. Those are the main things that I experienced. It wasn't so much what I did, although there was a couple of times when I did things that she reacted to very strongly. And this was early on in the relationship when she was still idolizing me, so she actually stopped and she asked me, why did you do that? You know, I, you know, looking back on it now, she was already in full devaluation mode, but because the relationship had just started, she was really working to keep the idealization going. So I explained it to her, and she was placated, and she went on. This happened two or three times. So if you notice, even in the idealization phase, it's not like it's 100% beautiful, and then it just gets destroyed. It's really, really beautiful, and it's peppered with all of these, these devaluation uh, happenings that will spark up but they'll come to you in in some way and you will placate them enough to you know patch it up with a little bit of, of uh, you know a little bit of duct tape and they'll be able to move on until there's you know there's so many holes in it that it falls apart and then they come straight at you and devalue you in the harshest way possible and in really really difficult ways to see. I, I said in a previous video that if you're honest with yourself, even when things are good, you're constantly feeling devalued. You're constantly feeling unsafe. And, and you may be doing it with a smile on your face. I have pictures, which I, I wish I had kept, because I'd show them to you. I have pictures of me early on in, in the relationship where, you know, my I'm like smiling, but you can see on my face, my eyes are, you know, baggy, I'm tired, you can see that I'm I'm just not at all, you know, balanced at all, but there's this smile on my face, the kind of smile that you would expect from somebody who is dying from a succubus, you know, that you're, you're having all this pleasure, but they're pulling all the energy out of you, and they will. They, the reason why is because they don't have any within them. That's not their fault. Their parents uh, neglected, uh, confused, and, and or um, abused and traumatized them when they were infants. So they never got a chance to create the reservoir that can hold the energy that creates the ability to go through life. Um, so, I could keep going on and on about that, but let's talk about the real reason. The real, the real reason they devalue you, they attack you, they reject you, and sometimes on the drop of a hat, is because Remember that everything in life is a projection, and that is true with them. Since they have no sense of self, and since their core essence is just this black hole of uh, chaos, emptiness, fear, anxiety, um, then they're constantly in this state of self-devaluation. 
And it's the worst kind because it's not like the kind of devaluation, devalue, I don't know if I'm using that word right, um, the kind of a, a process of being devalued that happens like let's say when you're 10 years old and your dad says, you know what, you're never going to become anything. When I, this is something my dad did. You know, When I was your age, I was doing this and this and this. And, you know, you're just not doing that. You know, that you hold on to in life, but there's still an identity identity underneath it. You know, it kind of taints you, but you can eventually find a way to work through it if, you know, if you're strong enough and or if you get help. But they don't have that because as, a, as an infant, there was nothing that gave them any, any evidence that they had any value. And that's probably because they may have had a borderline as a parent or a, a, you know, a sociopath as a parent or an alcoholic or um, you know, some other, somebody else who was just so, who neglected them. And, and, and because they didn't see any value in their child, the child didn't get any experience of having any value. And I found that, you know, there's a lot of people with some really severe childhood trauma that doesn't even compare to the trauma that happens to infants when they don't get nurturing and love. It, it, it's the worst. It's absolutely the worst. It's horrible. So I really feel for them. So that's why I can understand, I think, why they react so strongly. And it doesn't change the fact that they're still so toxic you can't be with them. Because the truth is, if there was something tolerable about, you know, my, my ex-girlfriend, I would still try and find a way to be with her. It's literally just impossible. It's just, she made it, you know, wasn't just intolerable, it, she made it impossible. And on top of that, it was extremely, extremely traumatic and uh, destructive to me. And I'm too old to go through that. Anyway, you're waiting patiently for me to tell you. Um, they have no sense of self. They have no value. Therefore, they are constantly having these, these horrific self-judgments within them. There's con they're constantly feeling that they are crazy, stupid, uh, idiotic, uh, ugly, uh, whatever it is you know, that, that they want to ascribe value to. Whatever it is they want. Like, you know, the girl I was with was very attractive and um, very very attractive, very sensual, very sexual. So that was extremely important to her that she be the sexiest woman in the room. Now the truth is that even though she was, ex she could, when she was on, she could be the sexiest, uh, most attractive woman in the room. But it wasn't because she had the best looks. She was good looking. But the truth is that there was there there were many other women that were far more attractive and had better, you know, things. I mean, she was. Don't get me wrong. She was like put up there eight or nine she was way up there like that but even if a 10 had walked in the room because it was so important for my ex to be the sexiest woman in the, in the room she would create a facade and you would see her and your eyes would be on her the whole time so whatever it is that's important to them to be smart to be beautiful to be loving to be spiritual to be kind so they're constantly feeling that they're not spiritual, they're not loving, they're not sexy, they're not beautiful, they're not smart, they're stupid, they're horrible, they're evil, they're crazy. These things are constantly going off in them all the time. And so all it takes is for one of those judgments to, to, be, to, to erupt in such a way that it takes over everything else, including their idolization of you. And literally, it can be something as simple as a look. Like, for instance, the move I just made. If I went and did this, if she was having an un, you know, some judgment went up in her mind, me going like this would have been to her as though I had just seen that and said to her, oh my God, you're the stupidest person in the world. She said to me more than once, don't look at me like that. You know, sometimes I had gas. Don't look at me like that. Um, so what's happening is that they're really not capable of anything other than two feelings. This is what I've come to realize. 
everything else that they exhibit that you think is a nuanced feeling is either um, a false mask that they're wearing in order to fit in or it's uh, you, you know they're able to mold it in such a way where they present it as something that it's not um, but that is the two emotions that they have are either fear or childlike um, infatuation with a parent those are the only two feelings that they have that means the rest of the time they are presenting feelings that they don't understand and don't have um, and they're simply trying to fit in um, and and they're fitting in so that they can connect and then get that happy feeling um, and or they're trying to connect and they're looking for how much you are devaluing them or hating them or judging them and once they get triggered remember it's only one or the other it's either childhood adoration as mommy and daddy are, are swinging the keys in front of them making them feel loved and happy or um, it's fear because you know just normal communication where there's some intensity that'll come in the voice like if I'm talking to you and you say something that doesn't make sense I'll go wait a minute that doesn't make any sense why are you saying that I'm not yelling at you I'm not screaming at you but just because some emotion comes to my face that to them uh, they experience as, as a giant monster screaming at them so they'll lose all ability to hear what you're saying and they'll only be responding to you know the you know the full-on intense emotion that they think you're hurling at them so they'll be afraid and intimidated or they will feel completely totally as though you have annihilated their existence you need to understand that when they are when they are um, triggered and they're telling you that you said this or you did that and I hate you for it or I can't have anything to do with you or I can't trust you and you're like but it was in the middle of a conversation and you had said such and such and I just simply agreed with you and I said blah 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 and you're forgetting the whole context they'll go no you said blah 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 and and you are destroying me and they it, for them it really is just the word itself because they have no identity they have no way to tolerate any uncomfortable feelings they have no no ability to tolerate any even constructive criticism and most of the time you're not even giving them constructive criticism you just happen to say or do something and they're they were triggered but even if you did it wouldn't be because you were trying to destroy their essence you were just trying to say something like hey I think you missed a spot right there you know and they'll go oh my god I can't believe you would say that you think that I've got this on I you you hate me so much that you would point out that one little flaw in me and I am so much more than that and I can't be around you click hang up I'm breaking up with you you're the worst person in the world it's because in their mind you have completely obliterated their entire existence why because they are depending on you for their identity and if you don't provide them with that then their experience is that you are literally destroying their entire essence and you know I, the the last time that I was uh, talking with my ex um, trying to understand why she was completely destroying the relationship and having nothing to do with me and I'm unsafe and I'm an evil person and I'm trying to erode her sense of self and, and you know, I was trying to understand why, what, where is this coming from? Um, at one point, you know, you know I, was, I, was, I wasn't angry, I wasn't upset, but I was saying, but hang on a second. Just two seconds earlier, you said this, and you remember the day before when that happened, and just that was so much that she said, I can't do this, and she got up and walked away. So it's because there's nothing there. So to even have a normal conversation, to hear, you know, 
you said that and this happened here and so why does that connect to that the amount of of effort to put you know a b c d and f and g together is is actually feeling like it's killing them now i'm telling you this because if you don't understand this if you don't understand that they are broken at the deepest level, like their entire frame of who they are is completely, totally not there, then you will be running on the assumption that they're mistaken and they just simply, you know, are blowing things out of proportion. And if you can just show them, you know, in a rational way, what is this and what is that, then you have the delusion that they'll go, oh, oh, okay, I get it. Right, I get it. It's not going to happen. And even when it does happen, because I have went through that, where there were times when I did say, do you remember you, you know, I called the psychologist because two days earlier you had called me up on the phone saying, can you please find me a psychologist? And then she went, oh, that's right, I remember that now. Okay, I remember that now. But then literally, <laughs> days later, she was destroying the relationship because I had said something related to her talking to the psychologist. And that turned into, you're, you are telling me that I'm crazy and you are insidiously getting into my self-esteem and you are trying to just every single day destroy my self-esteem so that I can't live. Um, and so the point I'm trying to make is that that even one day if they get it they're not going to get it some point it might be the next day or the day after but they won't it won't stick whatever it is it won't stick and it won't stick because there's nothing to stick to there's nothing there it's just empty chaos and, and anxiety and again I'm told that a psychologist you know a, a trained psychologist if the borderline is willing and um, acknowledging that they have this, my understanding is that they can heal. So I don't know what it takes, you know, but apparently whatever it is that they do, I don't know what the, the therapy is. I never got a chance to find out. But whatever the therapy is, I guess it allows them to sort of create a, an identity. I, I honestly don't know. But anyway. The real reason they reject you isn't because anything you say or do. It's because at some point uh, the false identity that they've created has to disintegrate because they don't have one. And if you happen to be there when their identity disintegrates, and if you happen to or say or do something that can just like a, a little breath you know, imagine having a, a, a really shaky toothpick, you know, pyramid. And all you did was just sigh out your nose and just the breath that came out of your nose, the whole thing comes crashing down. That's all that's happening. You know, there's a, looks like there's a pyramid in there. Looks like there's an identity in there. But you literally had a look or you said something and that's all it took. And then the entire facade comes crashing down and you destroyed their entire existence. You need to understand that. It feels like you've destroyed their existence. So it's impossible. The point I'm trying to make with you it is that it is impossible to have a relationship with this person. And it's just a matter of time. It's not a question of if you'll trigger them. It's just a question of when. And really, again, you're not the one that's triggering them they are being triggered you happened to be there when it happened that's all that it means okay so that's it uh, the real reason they reject you is because they have no sense of self and no amount of love is going to give that to them and the best thing you can do is leave and the kindest thing you can say to them is i love you but the dynamic of this relationship is too painful if you get targeted therapy for your borderline issues give me a call until then for my safety, I can't have any contact with you. It's nothing personal. I love you. That is the best thing you can do because if you keep staying with them, you are going to keep placating them 
and you are going to uh, only prolong their pain because they'll you will provide even in the rejection this is something I learned even when they reject you by you still being there on any level it gives them something to sort of hang on to and push off of even if it's yeah I rejected him but he's still there for me um, you have to make it clear that I am breaking off all contact with you because you are destructive and when they have nothing left I think that's the only way that if it gets bad enough then they'll reach out for you know the help that they need okay so that's it